Today we're gonna code lots with Mr. Kim Phil Potts and oh how amazing you'll be. Hey everyone, <clears throat> excuse me. Hey everyone, how you doing? Welcome back to another stream. If there's anyone out there, all on lockdown. So uh, hopefully everyone's doing well and, um, and welcome back. All right, what day is it? It's Friday. So uh, it's a, a stream challenge or a UI challenge. We're gonna have a look at the uh, continuation of the travel application, uh, which we're working on. So. Uh, Go ahead and play this. This will give you an idea of what we're working on or what we're trying to achieve uh, in this session. So uh, this is the second of the streams. Uh, I haven't uploaded the video for the previous one, but we'll, uh, we'll check that one out or I'll upload that a little bit later on. All right, let's, uh, let's see where we got up to. Uh, so first things first, let me share my, uh, share my device here. All right, so we've got the media player uh, running, which is pretty cool. Um, first time I played with that last stream, really, really nice little component. It displays our, uh, our movie here. And as we click on it, we're expanding that out. And when I click it on again, we bring it back down. Okay, cool. So, um, so that sort of is the starting point for today. So we've got a bunch of things that we want to tackle. Let me not do that. Let me instead bring up the list of things that we want to do. All right, cool. So a um, couple of things that come to mind we need. We need a background map. Um, so when the, when the video is here, we need this background map. I'm probably not going to do a real background map. I'm probably going to fake this uh, with with an image. I'm working from home, uh, as is probably everyone. And my son over here is just uh, knocking on the door. All right. Next thing we want to do, we want to deal with a corner radius when we're expanding. So at the moment, we're not doing that. So we probably want to go in and work on that. We need our fonts and our labels in here. Uh, what else do we need? We need to um, get our cutout of our... Did I know that my chat isn't showing on the screen as it normally does? I think it is. I can see it up above here, Rob. There it is. Yeah, I put it to the side. Hey, Rob, how you doing? All right, what else we got? Um, just the background was different. Yeah, so <laughs> I need to spend a little bit of time actually working on my uh, on my stream layout, I think. So um, yeah, let me know if the, if the audio is not right. Was the music too loud? Let me know. Otherwise, we're just going to chill out and we're going to um, code this up. Okay, um, so the other things we need to do, we need to do the cutout. So as this uh, progresses along, we've got this sort of section here where we've got this cutout. Um, so we'll put our cutout of our airplane icon. <laughs> Rob Giffen's doing well, making the family watch me during uh, dinner. Oh well, funny things what lockdowns will do to us. Okay. Um, now, the other thing I wanted to do as well was I wanted to, um, and I'll probably do this first, improve some of the animation code. So at the moment, um, the animation code, it's kind of a little bit scattered. You know, there's a lot of, if we have a look at our, 
our page here. We've got a lot of variables hanging out here. So I wrote a little helper um, during the week. And so I might include that in here and just help simplify it a little bit. All right. Um, fonts and labels. With animation. Beautiful. Uh, just as a reminder, everyone as well, um, the GitHub for this is here and the project that we're working on is this Xamarin Forms UI challenge or this, uh, dri this dribble design, I should say. The microphone's just uh, going down. Beautiful. All right, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tidy up some of this animation. Um, so I got this, I got this class that that I, uh, I quickly knocked together, and I'm just going to add that in here. And all it's really doing is it's just kind of holding those animation values. So we'll call this uh, like animation helpers. All right, and so the idea of this, I'll just paste this in. I've got it over here on a, on a separate window. It's basically just a dictionary when it comes down to it. All right, so it's really just a dictionary. Um, so it's a dictionary here, which has some animation keys. So the thing that I'm animating and also some states and just sort of manages those a little bit nicer. So the idea was I'd get these animation states that I have here collapsed. And this only has two states, it just says collapse and expanded. And I'll move that into, into here. So I'll say, yeah, we've got two states. And I'll just make this a public. And then what we want as well is we want an enum of animation key. And this is really just going to have um, like whether we're doing our cell expanding or which animation key that we're holding on to. So uh, let's do a cell and let's do an expand because they're the two that we have in there at the moment. So let me show you what the idea here is. The idea basically um, is instead of having all of, well, first of all, the animation helper, right? It's just a dictionary of animation keys and animation values. And so, Animation values just show the current state of the animation value. And it also has the values that it wants to be under various states. Okay. Um, and we can basically set these up and it just helps to encompass it so that we don't have to have all of these different values in here. So I'm going to just play around with this for a little bit and uh, it'll probably break things for a while, but let's see how we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create myself um, And Anim is a new animation helper. Privation. Wow, cool. Okay, something like that. Why can't you see my class? Because it's called animation helpers. Maybe it should be animation helper, shouldn't it? Yeah, animation helper. And it probably means I should rename this. I don't know. Should it be helper or helpers? Have you found that? Do, do, do. Singular, stress for you, welcome. Yeah, okay, singular. We like animation helper then. Now, why is this not finding it? Where are you? 
Animation helper is a dictionary. going on here oh okay well probably what we want to do here no type to find on the, the variable oh, dearie me wow this is my first time writing code did I mention that So, um, excuse me. So Load King. Hi, how you doing? Where do you keep offline versions of these videos and can you kindly break them into sections? Yeah, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to do that. Prepare programming for the wind rock. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I put them on my YouTube channel. It's where I normally upload them to. I would like to break them into sections. Um, I just haven't had an opportunity to do that. In fact, what I'd like to do is I think it would be really useful to just record like a, a 10 minute video on each of the UI challenges just quickly running through it because nobody wants to watch this for hours and hours and hours. So um, that's a good idea. I like that. I'm gonna... Let's have a look here. Um... Loading kink. All right. Nobody wants to watch this for hours. All right, cool. So we've got an animation value here. Now I'm just trying to work out what I'm gonna do. Now I'm, I kind of got annoyed uh, as well as I was working through this of, of doing everything times density. So I think I'm just gonna stick with uh, just just normal values here. Uh, so in other words, not the density values. So I'm going to just make this 15. In fact, it is already 15. Uh, so Loaded King, I can volunteer to break them down for you into sections. Sure. Well, let me, let me hit you up in a, a private chat later on. All right. <clears throat> So let's, uh, let's uh, get started with this. So the idea then with this uh, animation uh, helper is that I'll create myself a, a, a method here. Set up animations. Okay. And then what I should be able to do is I should say, okay, well, let's... Um, Let's go and set a state value, right? And we'll say four, and I've got, so there's basically two animations that are happening at the moment. We've got the expansion of the cell and we've got the expansion of uh, the actual element itself. So I'm gonna say, okay, for the cell, right? When it's in a state of collapsed, right? Then it should be basically um, off the screen or well, at the bottom of the screen, right? So we'll put it at the height of the page minus uh, the height of the cell. So do we have a cell height? Um, we'll create ourselves a cell height here. This kind of just a little bit of, bit of refactoring. So I'll create myself a few constants here. And I'll tidy this all a little bit later on. I'm just gonna 
leave this as doubles and this may as well be a const and we'll have another constant double which is our cell height okay and we'll just give this a value the same sort of value that we might have in our markup page what have we got here um so this one here we'll say that that's 300 actually it doesn't matter because if you remember um it's actually the skier sharp that's providing the cutout for it so we can make that any value we want and so down here we want to say when we're in a state of collapsed the cell is going to be at the height of the page uh, minus the cell height plus the padding all right now when we're in a state for this when we are in a state of expanded right we want it to go right to the top of the page so we'll, we want it to be zero cool now the other thing that we need is we need the expansion values as well hey rest rest the Famka. i can't read those things welcome Thanks for the follow. All right, so um, that's going to be where we're at here. Okay, and then we're going to say uh, for our expansion. We don't want an animation cell. We want our expand. And we're going to say when that's in a state of collapsed, right, then our value is going to be zero. We're not expanding that triangle at all or that rectangle. When we are in a state of, uh, sorry, when we're in expanded, it's going to be zero. Yep. When it's in a state of, of collapsed, is that right? Now this is actually the other way around. So for our expand, when we're in a state of expanded, we want that to be the height of um, our page. Beautiful. Okay. And we also want to set the current values, right? So the idea is that these are holding the, 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 the values for the different states. But we also want to set its current value. Um, so we could say animation for our cell. Current value. And we just want that to be the same as the starting state, right? So we'll say that is equal as the animation because we're starting off in our collapsed. So we'll say uh, anim helper. I'm sorry, anim. Ah, uh, Beatty Robert. Thank you. Thank you. Just want to say you're doing a, an amazing job of these streams. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, all right. So what I want to do here is I actually want to say, let's get this value here. Instead of just typing it again, I'll say anim dot um get state value for the cell when it's in the state of collapse because that's where we're starting okay beautiful and we'll do the same thing for our expansion right because we're starting in that um so we'll say for our expand 
Okay, so that's kind of going to hold our values, right? And the idea is that we can then get rid of all of those nasty variables up the top here. Okay, cool. Hey, Trevi Dale. And uh, hi, why be a dragon? Welcome. Welcome back. We're just tidying up some animation code here, so I could get messy for a while. I'm going to break lots of things. All right. Um, cool. Now let's have a look at what we're, we're doing here. So in our size uh, allocated, so this is where we're sort of working out our initial values. Hopefully we don't need to do too much in here, but what we will have to do um, is we have to set up those animations. So I have to call that method. Dragon loves breaking things. Well, you're in the right place. Look at that. You want to see a useless comment? Set up the animations. And then the method it calls is called setup animations. <laughs> Let's get rid of that. <laughs> All right, we do want to say uh, translation Y. Okay, so this is where the video is is offset, and we pretty much want to just say, well, let's go and get that value uh, from our animation. We'll get our state value of our cell in a state of collapsed. All right, cool. All righty. So that sort of sets that up for us. We've got our density. Now, did I ever, uh, Dragon says, did you ever figure out the issue you were having at the end of the stream last week where the offset of the video? Uh, we did, um, but there's some more work to be done. Um, let's have a look at where it's at at the moment. Um, I'll have a look at it in a moment. We'll, we'll, we'll get this to a running point and then we'll see what's happening. Because I'm probably going to break it all again is the, the simple answer, Dragon. Okay, so here, what we should be able to do now, right, is we should be able to get rid of all of this rubbish here. Right, so when we go to a state, because we now have all of these variables encapsulated in a class. And hopefully this will make it a little bit easier. All right, so let me get rid of all of this code. And I should be able to animate in the cutout position. Right, so uh, we want to adjust the position of the cutout. So I'm going to just say my anim. Um, do, 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 do. For our cell, our current value is going to be equal to our animation value. Okay, and that should be it. And then we should be able to, in fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make this a little bit nicer to read. Let's, let's do this. Is that a callback? Is that what it's called? Our start is going to be anim animation key dot cell. Actually, I can just call this method here. Hang on a second. So I should be able to say, get the state value. Actually, you know what? From the start, for the start, I think what we really want to do is we want to get it from the current value because if we get it from the current value, it means that that's where we're starting from, which means it should be able to be like an interruptible animation, hopefully. So let's do that. Let's just go animation value for, and we'll get the current value, which is going to be our animation key.cell.current. 
our end value is going to be our state value. So get state value for the animation key dot cell and the state we're moving to, which is called current state here. So I don't love that. I think we might call that new state. And then we'll say easing is, and we'll probably have to adjust those easing values a little bit as well. Okay, let's see if that makes sense. So we're saying cut out animation, update its current value, update the video position, invalidate the surface, going from its current position to where the state should be for that cell given this state. Makes sense. All right, now for our expand, we'll say, we pretty much want to do the same thing, right? Um, so let's do this. Let's say, let's tidy this up as well. There's so many parameters in this. Sometimes I like to use named parameters. What's going on with my microphone here? There we go. So let's say this is our callback. All right, so in our callback, we pretty much want to just say, we want to set our animation, set current, set state value. No, set the current value for the key. So this is our expand animation. So we'll say for our expand, let's set its current value to animated value. Because then what we're going to do is we're going to invalidate the surface and then it's going to take that and work with it. Beautiful. And so we're going to end up with the same thing here. So I'm going to say animation key dot expand. That's where we're starting from. And we're ending at the state value. And hopefully this will make it easier to, to understand. Whether it does or not, who knows? Let's get rid of a few of these lines here. We probably don't need those in there. Okay, cool. And we need an easing value there. Beautiful, then we've got a parent animation. And we're going to add each of those animations into there. And then we're going to commit that. Beautiful. Okay. It seems to, to kind of make sense. Now, why did I break? I would have broken a whole bunch of stuff here. Mostly to do with. Okay. So I reckon I can get rid of all of these. Now I, I need the density. I can get rid of that. We've got our cell height. I'm just going to get rid of all of those variables because they annoy me. Get our state, get rid of that one. That holds our animation values for states and current. Callbacks. Lachlan, hey Lachlan, how you doing? Callbacks, question mark. Yeah, I feel that there's some more work that could be done with that. I think this could be simplified. I mean, because these are really doing the same thing, right? <laughs> Lachlan says C sharp 
four called and it wants its asynchronous programming pattern back. <laughs> Fair call. All right, let's, uh, where are we gonna put this paint surface? Let's put this right down the bottom. So I can find it when I need it. All right, our paint surface. So now when we're doing our, our so now I'm, I'm doing everything in, um, just in sort of Xamarin Forms units, and then we'll just com convert it across to, um, to density when we need to, I suppose, right? So I can say, um, now we're gonna need padding quite a bit. So let's, so that's gonna be our padding times by our density. So the left is gonna be the padding. The top is going to be uh, basically our current, um, a current value plus the padding, right? So that's where that cell is going to be. So we'll say um, animation um, based on a cell. Okay, uh, its current value, which is a double, so we'll times that by a density. Um, and probably, probably the padding as well. We'll find out. Let's do that. Is that a float? Plus the padding PX. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so the right is going to be the width of the drawing surface minus the padding. The bottom is going to be the top plus the cell height. Um, and now our cell height, we're gonna have to times that by our density. And we're also gonna have to I hate converting between doubles and floats so much. SST FPV, how are you doing? What's going on here? <laughs> You're a hobby coder in Python and probably not very good at it. Well, I can say the same thing about me um, in C Sharp and, and Xamarin, but uh, what are we doing? That's a good question. Um, it probably looks pretty confusing what I'm doing here because I'm actually just refactoring code and breaking lots of stuff. But ultimately what we're doing here um, is we're working in Xamarin. Um, we're, so we're in C Sharp. And on a Friday, um, we are continuing a previous UI. So in our case, what we're doing is we're having a look at... Um, at this UI challenge, right? So I basically grab these things from, from Dribble. That didn't work very well. Let's get that URL. Okay, so I got this, this lovely UI here and 
on a Friday, what I do is I do UI challenges. I basically try and replicate this UI in cross-platform Xamarin code, uh, preferably with a minimum noun of, of uh, things like custom renderers as well. Okay, so that's, that's the idea. And this is a continuation of a previous stream. And Rob says he's been programming every day for 26 years. I'm still not very good at it. Rob's a fine coder. I know Rob. But yeah, one of the nice things about live streams is you can get to see sort of how um, people who've been coding for years still just screw up all the time. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to adjust the cutout based on the expand animation. Yeah, great. Thanks, uh, SS10. All right, so um, let's let's get our expand value, right? So this remember this is the animated value, so it's coming from our animation helper with our animation uh, key of expand. All right, so we've got our, our current value, um, and we want to convert that to to our density, okay? Because scare sharp doesn't work in points or DPs, it works in pixels. And so our density is the density of the screen. Beautiful. So uh, let's, I'm going to refactor this code later on too, because it feels really ugly for me, but I'm just going to leave it at the moment. So this is basically just expanding the size of a rectangle until it gets to a particular bounds. I feel like there should be um, a way I can do that much easier. Uh, it's going to break, isn't it? All right, we'll get our animation value, span value here, blah, 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 blah. Beautiful. Okay, so now what we have is we're using our expand value, we're expanding our cut out we're then creating a rectangle of that we're creating a, a rounded rectangle um, so the question is what do we want to use for, for this we'll probably have a, a corner radius um, let's have a look at the design here in fact what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up the video whoa All right, and let's have a look at how big this is. So what I'm, I'm basically creating this, this rounded rectangle here, um, and we've got a padding. We've got a rounded corner here, which is probably about twice the size of the padding, just at a guess. So let's just start with that. So we'll just say our, our padding, which we've already gotten pixels, times two. Okay. Um, in fact, oh well, let's let's go with that for the moment. So let's get our corner radius here. Corner radius there. So now we have this clipped rectangle and then we're drawing a background, which is at the moment, um, just a, a white background. Okay. So if all's going well, we can build this. And it will work. Did you work? Yeah. Tell you what I have, I still haven't worked out. I still haven't worked out why when it first loads.
Zoics. My windows are going crazy. Okay, cool. I got children knocking at my door again. <laughs> Hello, Discord. Rosie. Hang on, just one second. Hello again. Sorry about that. All right, cool. So what do we got here? We got this, um, we got this, right? This is expanding. Beautiful. Oop. It's sort of expanding out to fill the top of the screen, which is what we're after. We need to get rid of those corner radiuses. So what we could do here is as it's expanding out, we could basically go and get those adjust those radiuses based on the expand value. It's a, it's a, it's a really nice design. Yeah. Dragon. Very, very nice design. Um, okay. So let's do this. Let's say if a corner radius, we're saying it's two times the padding. Let's subtract the expand value off of that and we'll see what we get I'm, I'm working f I'm like all my kids are home at the moment You can probably hear him trying to get in through the door. There we are. Look, here we are. We've got our expand value. And then it comes back out. Knock, knock, knock. Yeah, let me go and let me go and deal with this. Yeah. All right, cool. So now we've got that. Okay, bear with me one second. My apologies. Although I don't really have to apologize because everyone's going through this, as you say, Dragon. going through it together where's everyone from indiana yeah it's uh it's certainly a challenge is there a plug-in for vs that you can see where you're located in the class on the right not sure what that means Mr. Martin in Germany, Stalin, Dominican Republic. Beautiful. All right, cool. So what do we got here? We've got ourselves uh, this animating. What should we do next? Let's have a look at our list of things to do. 
Oh, this thing here. Oh, this. Yeah, so this thing is um, is a, an option in Visual Studio. Sorry, I didn't understand the question. Uh, somewhere. Mm -mm. Where is it? Anyone know where it is? Um, do, 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 do. Let me find it. Do we have a, yeah, that's a good idea. Scroll bars. All right, cool. Um, so yeah, so show horizontal show. Um, so here, this is this, uh, this bar on the right hand side here. Yeah. So you can say, um, show changes. There's a place as well where you can set where, how, how big it is as well. Right. First person to find it. Under behavior. This is how you get distracted. So use, uh, use bar mode. I uh, use map mode. Show preview tooltip. Uh, this is what I was after. They've changed it. So you can either have uh, the source overview as off, which is going to turn it off back to normal scroll bars, or we can go, we can say narrow, which I th think is how I normally have it. So it just gives you a bit of a map of, of, of the window. The other one as well is you can have it like full biggie mode. And you have it nice and wide here as well. It's kind of nice for actually just scrolling through your pages. And also you can turn on the tooltips as well. And so you can see what's going on there. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. My preference is... Um, is narrow. Still gives me the idea of the window. Um, and I can still get the preview, so it's all good. Okay. Um, yeah, it'll change the color of the lines as well, which means if I was to come back here, there we are. So here's a, here's a better example. The green line, the green things here are lines that I've changed basically. Same as this, same as this over here. <laughs> Rob, Rob has the comment of the day. He says, um, if I had a file that made, uh, th that he felt he needed a map, pretty sure he'd break it up into multiple files. <laughs> yeah. And, um, SST, um, got to get into the flow with what you're trying to do. Distractions are distracting. Yeah. That's why live coding is so hard. Because you, you, you kind of, or I, I don't know, I like to just hang out and chat with people. So between that and kids, it's pretty distracting. So it's not the most efficient way of coding by any means. But anyway. All right, let's uh, let's get back into this, see what we can do next. So we got that, that expanding out quite a bit. Um, I think I've improved the animation code a little bit. I think it could do with some more refactoring. Um, a background map. Should we put that in? Let's put that in. Okay. Now for the background map, I'm just going to, I'm not going to use, so the background map, what I mean by that is basically this thing here. Um, presumably a map of Khan's uh, or Khan. So I found a cool map thing the other day. Um, customize. Um, Google map. Do, 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 do. 
So there's snazzy maps. Rob, <laughs> Rob says, good streams of 40% teaching, 40% community, 20% coding. Absolutely. So all I'm going to do here for the moment is I'm going to explore my styles here, right? So this is, this is a pretty cool thing called snazzy maps, which allows you to go and um, it, it basically provides different overlays for, for Google maps. Um, but for the moment, I'm just going to steal an image. So what I'm after is I'm going to filter by tag. Let's go grayscale. We want a minimum of lines. I wonder if there's another one. No labels. Gray. So I'm just trying to find something that's similar for the moment. And we'll just we'll just literally steal an image from it. Hmm. Maybe something like this. All right, so we could do this, right? We could say, hey, let's go and have a look at cans. Cans. Let's have a look at the map. It's nice and light. There we go. All right, something like that. And what's interesting about this is, oh dear. Sorry, I just lost. Snazzy map says no. All right, let's have a look at this one. Thanks, Dragon. All right, it's a little bit dark for my liking, but I think what it has here is it has all of this code in here, right? Which basically says how this thing looks. And what I know about this is if I go and copy this code, there is no, this is not what I'm after. Here, there's a styling wizard. And I can go and I can import that JSON into here. Okay. And then what I can do is I can play around with this and I can like select themes, for example, and I can come in here and I can do things like I can adjust colors, which is pretty cool. So what I'm hoping is I can find a way country province. trying to work out where I would find all the ocean. Ah, water. There we go. Because what I want to do is I want to make that water 
a little bit lighter gray, right? So there we are. Not yellow, lighter gray. So that's kind of like what we're after. I might go and get rid of the labels. So we'll hide all the labels. There we are. That's pretty much what we're after. I don't know why roads, roads are separate. There we go. That'll probably do us, I reckon. All right. So, so what I'm going to do, and this is super cheaty for the moment, right? Is I'm basically just going to create myself a, a cutout of, of a similar sort of region. Something like that. And then I'm going to come over to Adobe XD. I'm going to create myself a rectangle here. And then I'm going to paste that appearance in here. All right, so this is pretty cheaty at the moment. We'll, we'll have a look at maps perhaps a little bit later on. All right. And then what we've got in here is we've got a little, if I actually have a look, let me grab this. Okay, that's our sort of image that we have there at the moment. I'm just going to create a circle. We'll probably just steal the background from this one to tell you the truth. Let's grab that. Let's get rid of border. Let's add a shadow. Um, let's make it a gradient the same as this one. So it's going to go from... Something like this. All right, that'll probably do us for the moment. It's a bit big. It's got a small white border on it. The problem when doing UI challenges, of course, is that you um, you have to cheat sometimes. R2, how you doing? Long time no see. Welcome.
Okay, I'm gonna export this out to say Android here under resources. Uh, I think that's about right. Uh, as PNGs for Android. I think that'll do it for us. And then we'll go and we'll export that as well for our iOS. What's up, R2? Wait on. I feel like I should. It's R2, so you can't argue with it. Play a sample for R2. All right, let's uh, let's include those images in. Uh, hopefully, we can find them. Okay, cool. Oh, better stop the project. I am at the new place. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a good way of showing you the new place. Um, maybe. Hang on a second. Maybe I can do this. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really it doesn't really shut. That's a little courtyard out there. Um, anyway, that's, that's actually not a very interesting shot at all. This is my desk. This is my Mac. This is my computer. All right. So I've got those, uh, well, no, I haven't bought those images in yet. Let's include them in the pro... You like seeing how I, how I have this set up. Actually, my desk is really messy, but um, I'll get a camera next time and, and maybe we can uh, do a little tour. Uh, All right, cool. So now we've got that image there. What we want to do is we want to go and plonk that in the background. So in order to do that, um, a really good... So now the challenge, the challenge, I suppose, is that, you know, this, this here is in a particular aspect ratio. We want it to change based on whether it's an iPhone or whatever. So I actually want it to do a, a, an aspect fill, which there isn't actually a setting for in Skiersharp, but what's cool is I've actually got a library from one of my other GitHubs um, probably Mountain Mobile. There's this bitmap ex extension. So bitmap extensions was um, was a class. I think it was probably written by Charles Petzold, um, or it comes from the docs anyway, from the samples for Skiersharp, and it basically makes images in Skiersharp. You can treat them the same as what you do in Xamarin Form. So you can say like you know aspect fill or, or whatever. So I'm going to import that in here. I should probably put it out as a new get. All right. So I'm going to just steal this code. Okay, so all it is is some extension methods for uh, drawing bitmaps. But it's got lots of, you know, interesting calculations in here as well. So I'll use this. And what we basically want to do is in our code here, we want to load a bitmap. So in order to, to load a bitmap, um, 
Actually, you know what? I think loading a bitmap in in here actually comes from the resource. Uh, sorry, from the asset folder. Hmm, I think that's where it's going to be. So I think I've actually exported into the wrong place. Um, because I want to do this in Skiersharp because I want it to have this cutout in here. So let's... Export this. as an embedded resource. Again, we'll work on this later on. Um, okay. So in order to load this now, I can get it from, um, from the bitmap extensions has a load, um, a load method, right? So um, what I could do is I can say, Uh, bitmap extensions load back map resource um, from this type and it's going to be called what if we call this travel app dot images dot background map dot png Okay, so that should load up the resource. So um, Dragon says, wait, you're going to put a cutout in the map. Well, actually what I'm gonna do here is if we go down to our code for our drawing. Okay, um, what we're actually doing for, if we have a look at the this video here, right? So part of the challenge with this, with this UI is that there's a, a video, right? That sort of overlays here, right? And then it goes through there. But that, that the bit that made me use Skier Sharp was, was this here. You see this? Now we've got this little cutout in here. So what I'm actually doing is the video is actually just, um, just the video itself. And all of this, is skier sharp with a cutout revealing the video behind it. And it's actually that cutout that I move up and expand. The video itself sort of, well, it, it moves up as well, but it doesn't change size. Cause if you notice the, the, the video, when it expands, the video itself is actually doesn't, doesn't sort of move. Like the top of the video is the top of the video, right? Um, so it's just revealing more of the, yeah, so it's a mask, exactly. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, okay, well, let's go and um, this is our background. So instead of just sort of drawing the background like like this, um, what we'll do is we'll use a, we'll use a bitmap, right? Um, hey, Wesby123, welcome. Thanks for the follow.
Where are you joining us from, Wesby? And do you do any Xamarin work? So if I draw here, right? So in here at the moment, I've got my background paint, right? So instead of what, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just say, you know what, let's draw a bitmap, right? I've got my, my bitmap file, okay? Which is, um, what do we call it? We call it map background, maybe, did we? Map background, okay? And I wanna draw this at zero, zero. I want it to, um, and this is the extension methods here, right? So I need to create a rect first problem. Uh, do I? So we'll say draw a bitmap from here to here. We'll say uh, info.width and the info.height. So the full size of it. Okay. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to actually just sort of do an aspect fill on it. Okay, so there's a bitmap stretch dot aspect fill. Is that going to do it for me? Uh, that overlay takes a uh, rectangle hang on a second let me put some other music on here because i don't want to get copyright striked so where can you find us uh, a skier sharp course um, that's an excellent question. Um, and I think probably the best place to learn skier sharp. Let me put this on. The best place to learn skier sharp is probably. From there's there's some samples that go along with with this. Um, so if you have a look at the the docs, and if you start having a look around here, you'll see that there's um, there's the samples here. Uh, is that just going to download the sample for me? Okay. So in this GitHub repo, the these demos. Um, they've actually got an amazing amount of stuff in here. So it's got all the stuff about bitmap curves, all this sort of stuff. So that's pretty much where I go to. And Matt LeBeau, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. He's, he's like the, the king of skier sharp. Okay, so let's. So I'm just creating a, a rect here. And I'm going to pass into this method. So I'm basically saying get this back, get this bitmap over that rect. Do an aspect fill. All things going well. That should um, should do it for us. It's probably going to take a moment whilst it embeds those those elements. It's the whole music. Whole music. It's the whole music. 
Don't just blow your ears. <laughs> Homestar Runner, exactly. So Dragon says, I use the demos in order to generate custom Google map icons. So I only need one SVG path, then use skier to color and draw on the SVG in memory. And then save the new bitmaps in a cache. Well, that sounds pretty cool. All right. Now, uh, what have we got here? All right. So we're going to map in the background now. There we are. We'll work on that map. We'll make that map a little bit prettier later on, but it's there. Okay. So what's happening is, um, is it's basically, I'm basically, if we look at the code here, okay, I'm creating a cutout. So I'm clipping this, right? So I, I basically create, um, a cutout. It's not going to let me draw on there. Uh, it's basically creating this cutout here. And so nothing draws in there. That's that's the mask, if you like. And so you can see the video that's sitting behind it. Um, and then, in our case, we've drawn the map. But the map, because of this clipping mask, doesn't draw over top of the video. What am I using to draw on my screen? So this is uh, this this little puppy here. Um, is the oldest tool in the world. Um, it's it's called it's called Zoom It. Like sys internals. So it's it's this thing here. It's awesome. It's what I kind of always use. It's really nice. Because you can, you know, you can, you can draw on things, and you can, uh, you know, put put text on here. It's pretty cool. Anyway, cool. All right, so we've now let's have a look at where we're at. We've kind of got a background map. We're faking it as image to investigate. Let's have a look at you know using a real map. Not really. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll have a look at that. Uh, we've done the quarter radius when expanding, so that's done. All right. Let's do the expanding bit at the bottom. So if we look at the video, it sort of goes up, it goes down. So we've got that bit. And then there's this white panel that comes up doo -doo 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 -doo, to the bottom here and then text appears. So let's get that expansion panel coming up here. So the fly up basically. Um, question there, SST FPV. It's the Boolean value. Well, what it actually is, if, if you imagine, yeah, let me, We've got our screen here, right? What we're doing with the clipping rectangle is we're saying, I basically, this is my drawing surface. And then what I'm doing is I'm saying, I want to create this rounded rect at this position here, right? Um, and then anything that I draw on here is going to draw here. But as, if it tries to draw in this area, it's going to clip it off. So if I had a line that came down here, it would go there, it would stop, and then it would continue, which is exactly what the map's doing. It's hard to see, maybe over... Here you can see that, but that's the idea of a clipping wreck. So, um, so this one here, exactly right. So what I'm going to do here on my theory is that, I mean, this is just a, a, a white rectangle, right? So that's, that's cool. But what I'll do is I'll create another cutout, which is here. So I sort of cut out that area 
And then, yeah, do a little bit of bit of animation on it as well. And I mean, we're already animating a, a cutout here. That's exactly what we're doing. When we're doing this, that's animating a cutout. It's just this one will be circular. But before we do that, let's do the fly in from the bottom. Um, so let's come back to our code here. So what we want to do is... How's that music level? Is that all right? So we're going to add another animation um, set of values in here. All right, this one's going to be for um, for the fly up, if you like. Um, So we'll have a state value for, and we'll add a new animation key in. I wonder if I can do this, uh, fly up. Yep, cool. Add that to our thing and we'll say for a collapsed. So when when the UI is collapsed, um, the fly up is gonna be the bottom of the screen, right? So it's gonna be the height of the screen. Uh, when we are in expanded mode, right? This is where it's going to, be the height of the screen minus some value. Let's just throw a value in here at the moment and we'll adjust it as need be. And then let's just set the current value This feels a bit clunky, but anyway. So we'll get the, the state of it when it is. Collapsed or yeah, when it's collapsed. So um having a look at the chat here. Started learning code in a Vic 20 Tandy machine in the early 80s. <laughs> I um I started on an Apple II. Yeah, an Apple II. Writing basic. It was awesome. Alright, so um so that's where we want it to be. So now we want it to animate up. So we're going to add another animation. I feel like all this should be abstracted out somewhere as well. This feels pretty dirty to me anyway. So this will be our fly up anim. And all we're going to do is we're going to say our fly up value current is going to be a fly up value invalidate this and then we're going to say start with its current value which starts at collapsed and then we're going to say end it at whatever our value is for the state that we're going to now let's add it in here Um, boop, 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 something like that. Why you no add? Oh, because I've added like, right, cool. <laughs> doop, 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 doop. All right, so. These kind of want to reverse. I want to 
fix that code too. If we have a look at what's happening here, let's see if we can work out the timings. So this is our There's nothing wrong with being an old dude. This comes up, it expands, and then straight from when the expansion finishes, this comes up. I think it's about half as long as that. Actually, it's, let's have a look. So that doesn't want to code a one anymore. So let's make that cutout animation. I don't know, it's kind of hard to know what these values should be. We'll just throw some values in. Um, so this is not going to go to halfway anymore. This will go to like, I don't know, 30. And then that will go from say 0.3 to... Actually, let's make that half. And we'll say the expand goes from half to 0.7 maybe. And then we'll say the fly up goes from 0.7 to one. We'll see how that looks. And then we'll reverse this around. We'll say this goes from zero to 0.3. This is gonna go from 0.3 to 0.5. And that's going to go from 0.5 to 1. All right. And then we've got to do something with this value. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw a rectangle. So in order to draw the fly up, um, I suppose the very first thing is, are we actually, so the fly up starts below the height and then it comes up. So let's create a, a rect here. Um, it's going to go from zero. It's going to go from the fly up. We're going to have to get the state of this. So let's, let's do this. So, um, Fly up, pause. Yeah, uh, Dragon, you in installed Zoom it. It's easy to use. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you can do it for, for zooming in, zooming out, and also for drawing. It's really cool. So our fly up pause is going to be whatever our animation value is. So we'll be able to say our, um, our anim fly up current value. Okay, cool. So we get that. Uh, we need to times that by our density. Whoop. Hey, David. David Lee. Welcome. And thanks for joining us. We're just uh, playing around with some, some Xamarin. So David, do you do any um, any coding? Or you're just stuck at home and bored? <laughs> or both? <laughs> All right, so we want this gonna fly up. Pause. The width of this is gonna be our uh, our width, I suppose. 
gonna be as high as that. And then we're gonna say, um, let's draw it. Canvas, draw rect, fly up rect. Uh, we need a paint object. All right, let's create a paint object. Um, I found that paint objects are, are best just done in one place. Actually, we've got a background paint here already that we were using. I can use that. Cool. Because I don't think we're using that anymore. Yeah, we're not using it. So let's call this fly up paint. It's called recycling. Okay, um, so we draw that fly up. We only actually want to do that if our fly up value, like we don't want to be drawing that all the time. So we'll say if our fly up pause is less than our height then let's do this right because otherwise we're going to be just drawing that every time even when the fly up isn't happening let's see if that works Uh, where's my okay here's a so it's up it's down and nothing happens Cool story, bro. Why is nothing happening? Let's see. So Dragon, you got three workers, completely switch over to VS Code, booyah. Do you have any experience using the fonts? I don't. I, I don't know if it's supported, really. Like, maybe Rob knows. Um, like, I think you can do it if you really try, but it doesn't have any of the nice tooling. All right, I'm just trying to work out what's happening here because it should be drawing. If we start that height is wrong, that bottom area, that should be, uh, the height minus the starting position, I think. That makes sense. That, that shouldn't matter here though. Oh, I know why. I know why, because our clipping rect is the full part of the screen, right? So it's drawing, but it's being clipped, right? 
So that's our problem. Um, okay, so now we're going to do something cool, right? And what we have to do is we have to save the state of the canvas and restore the state around our clipping rect. All right, which isn't actually that hard to do, right? It sounds hard, but it's not. Um, so we want to say here, um, uh, SK canvas. Wait on. I do this somewhere. Where do I do this? The new SK canvas. Yeah, auto canvas restore. Okay. So what that's doing is it says store the state of the canvas here. Yeah, there's Rob, Rob, uh, yeah, Rob, I, I agree with you. You could, you could make it work by doing a whole bunch of command line rubbish, but it's probably just not worth it. Okay, so we store the state of the canvas. So the state of the canvas before we do the cutout. Then we do our cutout in here, right? Which means anything that applies in this section here is going to have the cutout. But afterwards, it's not going to have the cutout. So I think we need to change the order of this so that we create the cutout, we draw the background, then we restore the canvas. So this will be without the cutout, then draw our fly up, which we'll draw over top of it. Hopefully that makes sense. So this red square here, by the way, this is like some weird reload problem. Because if I do a hot reload, it appears. Ah, beautiful. There we are, there's our fly up, done. All right, so we can use exactly the same logic now to do our circle. <laughs> now for the circular cutout. Yeah, let's let's do that thing. Let's do that thing. All right, should be pretty similar, right? Should be ridiculously similar. So we will come back to add we need an animation now for the circle. I don't know if I can join some of these together, but anyway, let's do this. So let's say we'll have a circle. We'll add that in. Yeah. And we'll... Okay, so when it's collapsed, the circle should be... Well, non-existent should be zero right um when we're expanded i suppose we'll just pick a value maybe what do you think what makes sense i don't know i suppose we'll just this is going to be in xamarin forms units let's make it like i don't know like 50 say Eighty pixels, so this will be fifty Xamarin units. We'll have a look and see how big it is. We can adjust it, um, and then uh, 
So that's it. And then we should create ourselves an animation. I'm going to work out a way of tidying up this code, I promise. So we're pretty much saying, okay, let's go and set its Set its current value. Let's go and start it at whatever its current value is. Let's animate it to the value it needs to be. So it's either going to be between like 50 and zero or zero and 50. Let's add it into our list of animations. It's going to go at the top here. So this is going to be our circle anim. So let's have a look at where it, where it happens. So this thing comes up. Okay. Starts cutting out. At the lower bound of the cutout. Yeah. Or, or the top of the fly out basically, right? And look at that, it's it's growing over time. And it has a little little bounce. So we can use an easing to do that. Alright, so it's just before that hits the top, it starts cutting it out. And then it runs past when that hits the end. Yeah, so this is one of the interesting things, Dragon, is yeah, I've talked about this before, is like when you look at these UI challenges, it's it's what I what I enjoy about it is breaking down the designs and realizing all the subtleties that are in there. It's loads of subtleties. So Rob says this is the most complicated UI we've tackled. I don't think it's that <laughs> This is a famous last words, Rob. I don't think it's that complex. <laughs> That's, of course, bollocks. The Marvel one was pretty con... You know, the one that I thought was the most complex, actually, is... Um, is this one. Hey, there's a follow there. Who was that? A lot of transitions in that one. And this one. Ah, memories. Anyway. <laughs> so, when we're expanding, this is going to finish at, say, 0.9. And this is going to happen before that. So it's going to be at like 0.85 through to one. Sure. And let's. Uh, and then when it goes back the other way, I, I shouldn't even worry about the what going back the other way, but I need a way of <laughs> replaying the thing. So it starts at zero, goes to. 0.15 and then this goes from point 0.1 to point 0.3 and this is our circle anim. All right, cool. Okay, so we got all of everything set up now. We've got to do the drawery bits, the drawery bits. So first thing we need to work out is what has to happen after this, right? So this is the, this is the cell cutout, and then we come back, but then I'm gonna have to create another canvas restore here, I think. Do I have to? I don't think I have to. I just need to.
create a circular clipping, circular circle clip. Mr. Bertastical, <laughs> welcome. Thanks for the follow. I, I I I missed that. I thought I saw a follow. That's quite a name. <laughs> this is a great name. All right, create a circle clipping. Uh, so first of all, we need to know how big the circle should be. So we'll get that from our animation. Circle, circle size. Animation key dot circle. Get its current value. Times it by the density because we're doing everything without density. And then, um, and then we basically want to uh, create a circle. So uh, canvas dot clip circle, that ah, shizen clip rect, clip path. There's no clip circle. Oh, well, that's not great. Um, we could create a, we could create a path, maybe. What do you think? What if we were to... We can do this. We can create a path. We can add a, add a circle into the path. Add a circle, beautiful. Um, we want this in the middle of the screen. We want it at the top of the flyer. And our radius is our circle size. So let's rename this to circle radius, perhaps. All right. We could just draw that path to start with. We could say canvas dot draw path, circle path, new SK, uh, color, SK color, colors dot red, Let's say um, style. Let's see if this works. Let's see what happens. So that should draw a circle where we want it. Let's see if it, if it draws a circle where we want it, that's good. Um, Ticklick Live, 
Hey, I need help with Visual Basic. Do you think you can help me? <laughs> I haven't done Visual Basic for years. So, uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> but there might be other people here who've done Visual Basic. All right, let's see what we have here. Where's my phone? There's my phone. Goes up, goes down. Oh. Can you see that on the screen? We have our circle. We have our circle. just a really small red circle all right let's let's just be brave let's just try clip it and see what happens so instead of drawing this path let's just go same code as up here basically canvas dot clip path as circle path um I always SK clip operation. I always get this wrong. What do what do we got? We've got difference and in intersect. Um, difference. Let's find out. What do we have up here? Yeah, difference. And the alias, sure, why not? And then, so we clip that path. Well, this should be in here, I think, for a start. This should be only. We only want to be clipping that if we're doing our fly up. Let's see if that works for us. Hey, no worries, SST. Take care. Thanks for thanks for stopping by. Every Friday, more UI goodness. Hey, look at that. There's their cutout. Pretty cool. I think the timing's wrong, but at least it's there. So now we draw a circle in the middle, a little bit smaller than that one, and we're good to go. <laughs> Sounds so easy. <laughs> Um, create a clip circle for drawing with that.
Is that true? Dragon. Nothing new in VB.net. It'll be in .NET 5, but they're no longer adding features. Wow. I did not know that. So they're not evolving the language, but you're going to get all the .NET framework stuff, right? That's all right. Sometimes I wish they stopped evolving C Sharp a while ago. <laughs> all right. So, um, so we're going to circle radius, this circle, canvas dot draw circle, draw circle. What do we need? We need a point. We need a radius. Well, we know our point, right? Our point is Um, our point is going to be the same one as this. It's going to be that, right? New SK point. X and a Y. It's going to be those values there, right? And this one is going to be in the same place. It's going to have a radius smaller than the other one. Circle, Does that not work? Head circle. Oh, bummer. Won't take a point. Oh well, doesn't matter. Do 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 do. So I think the correct thing, Rob. BB isn't dead, but it's not alive. Isn't it like it's not dead, it's just feature complete? Isn't that the isn't that the saying? It's as good as it's ever gonna get. <laughs> um so um this radius is gonna be just smaller than the other one, right? So if we said it was like 10 units smaller, uh, not to convert that to pixels. We need a paint object. Let's create ourselves a new paint object. And I'm going to need a color for that. So let's have a look at our Not quite black. Nothing's ever quite black. That's what I found out about design. <laughs> yeah, white pad joke. Same radius minus arbitrary number. <laughs> exactly. 
Well, actually, that's an interesting question because is it the same radius or does the radius increase? Yeah, the radius stays the same. Oh, sorry, no, the, the, the difference is a fixed difference. It's not proportional. Yeah, so it is. It's, it's literally... Um, Hang on a sec. Fill any surface in a paint. So, um, that's our brush. So yeah, we're just subtracting 10, might be a bit much. Double to float, circle radius is a float. Oh God. So yeah, a bit of, um, <laughs> a bit of conversation there about, um, bb.net yeah look I, I i used to when i started my career i was a microsoft certified trainer for uh for a company and i was teaching vb3 um and when i went contracting in the uk i decided it was time to move to c sharp and um yeah and i haven't looked back either i think c sharp's a really really nice language Hey, you guys need more stars. Hang on a second. Yeah, have some more stars. And a couple of bombs. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Back to here. What are we doing? What am I doing? Drawing a circle. Is that going to work? Draws a circle, clips a path, draws the fly up. Does that order matter? Probably not. Because we want to do it before we clip the path out, right? Let's see if it works. Get this stupid page to refresh. Booyah. There we are. There's a center circle. It needs a bit of bounce, doesn't it? But what I, I, what I love about this design is that layering where you can still see the video as this wave comes across. goes underneath there. Oh yeah. All right. Um, now let's have a look. Let's add some bounce to that puppy. So when we create an animation, we're going to have circle animation. Hey, one gone yali. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks for the follow. One gone yali. I, I'm probably saying that horribly. <laughs> uh, thanks for the follow. All right. You're welcome. Uh, oh, Ticklick Live. Uh, 
Thanks for following too. Appreciate it. All right. Okay, and Rob says, I don't know what space bucks are. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta work out what to do with so much stuff on this stream. Um, Rob says not to call you out on anything, but last time you said you were gonna have both Android and iOS Sims running. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, okay. It's true, I did say that. Uh, but first, let's get, um, let's get a bounce happen. So that should just be a different easing, right? Um, it's not bounce. What is it? What's all the spring in, spring out, spring in, moves away and then leaps toward, no, bounce. No. What's the name of the, is it spring? Let's have a look. Spring, what's spring out do? Overshoots and then returns. So it goes out, overshoots. Yep, that's what we want. We want spring out. Ah, oh, there's, there's easings.net. I think maybe that's what you're thinking of. This one. It doesn't make it any easier to get it in my head though. <laughs> so it's not bounce, we don't want bounce. I don't think they have it in here. But look, I think Spring Out's gonna do what we're after. Let's have a look. And then we'll see if we can get it working on iOS. <laughs> it should mostly work. I wonder if iOS actually has this same problem with hot reload. Ah, beautiful. See that? It overshoots a little bit at the end of this. Boink. Beautiful. All right. We're pretty good there, I think. Okay, that's cool. Um, right, let's see if we can work on a on a on a uh, on a Apple device. What am I? What are we clicking that window for? I want to connect to my Mac. Do you know how long it's been since I, um, Tysag, um, oh, mono version of my Mac is not compatible. Wow. Do I want it to override the existing? So here's an opinion. Y yeah, I think this, I think this works fine. It's safe. Good. Thanks, Rob. Because what, what it's saying is I've probably got an older version um, of Visual Studio or, you know, all the Mac and Mono stuff on my Mac. But now it auto upgrades it. Um, yeah. So Dragon does it as well. I hate doing it when you switch from preview to stable. Yeah. Well, at least you don't have to go and like over your Mac and flick it back and forth. So, um, Tarsag, sorry, I'm probably saying that wrong. Time to go to bed. Well, thanks for joining us if you do. Remember, part of staying safe is staying healthy. And that means you should get sleep. Unless you work from home. <laughs> in which case you can just sleep in in the morning couldn't connect Bob. come on you can do it yeah Ha <laughs> 
<laughs> if you roll uh, roll out of bed three minutes before, you should probably just do just have a shirt and do stand ups from bed. All right, something 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 iOS. Let's see if it works. Gark. iPhone simulator. XS Max. <laughs> Daily laydowns. <laughs> Sounds are wrong. Show me the iOS, it's coming, it's building. All right. Here it is, Rob. I think there's very little chance it'll work. Oh. Well, you never know. I mean, it should. This is going to go terribly wrong. Hello, IT. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Look, I think there's, um, hey, our image, at least it loaded the, um, okay, loaded the background image. It's not, by the way, my, I should point out my Mac is Wi-Fi connected here at the moment, right? Which means it's actually doing these frame redraws over Wi-Fi. So it's, it's going to perform terribly um, because you should always connect your Mac with a wired connection. Anyway, let's see. Up, down, booyah. That kind of mostly works. I think what we probably want to do is perhaps be a bit more responsive because iPhones are so long. Maybe that wants to pop up a little bit more. Well, see, this is why I like using Skia Sharp as well, right? Because Skia Sharp doesn't care what platform it's on. That uh, actually works pretty well. One thing I will do, we have a background color of red in there. Ooh. Hot reload isn't working on my simulator. That's interesting. Oh, you know what I should try? <laughs> try again, you disappoint. There we are, first time. Oh yeah, it worky. All right. Um, I tell you what I want to try. I want to try that multiple launch thing. Remember, you can come in here and you can do something something configuration manager no where is it is it under here um i'm just trying to remember where set startup projects let's see if this works so I'm going to say, instead of just starting the iOS, let's start both the Android. And the iOS. <laughs> or there. Um, 
And so theoretically, theoretically, if I start this up, it should launch both of these. <laughs> Rob, you're trembling with anticipation. I've never done this before. Um, so Dragon, I, I am running this. This is a physical device. Like this is. Oh, you're not going to be able to see it because my cord's too short. That's um, yeah. My Android's a physical device. My iOS is a simulator. Taking a while. I don't know if it did it work. Let's wait. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I'm not going to play around with iOS sets because I have to get off soon. Um, go and look after my kids. That is the worst part. What's happening here? I don't like the way this is looking. Oh, wait on. Things are happening. Sometimes things don't work. Oh. Really? This seems awful. Oh, no, nah, it didn't work. It didn't work. Why didn't it work? Oh, hang on. Wah, wah, wait on. Oh, there goes Android. And iOS. Oh, yeah. All right. Excellent. But you notice how it doesn't work first off on Android? I don't know why that is. If I do a hot refresh, it'll work. I'm not sure why that is. Beautiful. All right. Well, we're going for a couple of hours. Um, I'm probably going to call it there. Um, let's write, let's work out some things that we need to do because we've got a few things left to do. We haven't done fonts and labels, so we're going to do those. We've done the cutout, circle cutout. We've done that. We need to add an airplane icon. What else have we got? Let's have a look at our design. Well, we could. What time is it? It's 12.30. No, I should, prob I should probably call it and go and look after my children. Because uh, I... I Oh, I should also mention, given that my boss is on the line. Oh, yeah, and I should go and do my actual work. Um, <laughs> so, 
How about that? All right, what do we need? We need fonts, we need colors, we need airplane like icons. We need, what do you think of this shadow? There's a shadow here, that's probably important. Uh, fonts and labels with animation. We need an airplane icon, we need drop shadow on cell. <laughs> um, beautiful. And then maybe use a real map in the background. I don't know about that one. That one seems tough, but we'll give it a go. Um, oh, actually, Dragon, did you mention you had some code that took a Google map and rendered it to a bitmap? Maybe we could, maybe you could share that out. Or, you know, hit me up on Twitter or something and we could do that. Ah, just an icon. Okay. All right, so I reckon if we do this stuff, um, tidy up animation speeds, how can we just about be done? So let's leave that for, for the next string. Ah, it takes a SVG and makes an icon. Okay, cool. All right, uh, anyone else see anything that needs doing on here? So where are we at the moment? We've got... That going up there, we need an icon, we need texts. Yeah, okay, that's no problems, Dragon. All right, well, let's let's do this. Let's um, let's check this puppy in for the moment. I'm gonna change this to be not multiple. Pro oh no, I'll, I'll just leave it. All right, let's check in this code. Um, All right, so you should be able to access it there if you want. Let's see if we can raid somebody. Let's see if there's anyone to raid. Okay, no worries, Dragon. Uh, I'll have a I'll have a good day. I will indeed. Um, anyone got any uh, any streams they want to uh, have a look at? Um, let's see what Dr. Mikachu is up to. Dr. Mikachu is super awesome. Is that a, is that a, uh, coding Python? Oh, wow. Cool. Okay. Let's, um, Python coder. Let's, um, Let's see if we can raid there, shall we? So um, I'm going to put that on. And let's uh, let's go and raid there. But um, hey, everyone, thanks so much for joining us um, today. So uh, again, you know, thanks to um, all the people who followed, all the people who contributed as well. Uh, much appreciated. Back Friday, next Friday, we'll finish this one off. Um, and if anyone's got any uh, UI challenges they want to send, feel free to shoot me a, a message on Twitter, um, you know, and, uh, and we'll pick a new one to work on. Alrighty. So uh, with that, take care, everyone. And um, let's say hi to Njo. Okay. Bye for now.